Hey Flip Fluid Lovers, Ryan and me thought about making a video about issues that you might drive into when using our add-on. And of course, explain how to solve these things. This video is split into 5 topics. First one is how to open the add-on's helper menu. Followed by how to turn inflow objects on and off inside a simulation. The third step is about problems with the simulation resolution that can result in no emitting inflow objects or fluid that passes through obstacles. Number four, we'll explain why fluid surface sometimes is flickering and the five helps to minimize or maybe avoid the volume loss issue that lies in the nature of the flip simulation method. Okay, let's go. Okay, so number one, the question is how can we make the uh, add-on helper menu appear on the right side of uh, our screen? And the answer is you can press N on your keyboard to open and close it, or you can use this little arrow here on the upper right to open it, and of course to resize it or to close it, uh, depends on what you would like to see. And um, when you open the right side, uh, this is a uh, panel where you can see uh, many different uh, helper or tools. And uh, how many things you see here, it depends on what add-ons you have installed in your Blender version. And some, uh, somewhere there you should find the Flip Fluids add-on helper panel. And inside this panel, you will find many, many cool things. This one will help you to create a domain on the fly. And uh, let's resize this one a little. And uh, if you have other objects here, so let's say you have a cube, you can, oh, I'm sorry, you can use uh, our helper menu to quickly make this one an inflow object, as example. And let's add another object, a new cube. And let's say this one is, an, uh, let's say it's an outflow. So you can also um, use our helper menu to make it a solid or wireframe uh, that can help you to work with your scene and you can hide it to render and show it for render. So uh, everything you can see here was made to give you the best user experience and the best workflow you hopefully ever have, <laughs> have seen in the Flip Fluid Simulation program. Yes, okay, so that's all about uh, the helper tool. Okay, number two on our list is how can you uh, enable and disable inflow objects inside the simulation? And uh, this is really simple. Uh, let me make an object here. So uh, if you have any fluid objects or inflow object, let's make one here and uh, take a look to the properties panel here, then you will find that enable checkbox here. Enabled means you will emit fluid and when you are clicking here to disable this one, that means that it is disabled and not emit any fluid. And you can animate this checkbox here by pressing I on your keyboard while holding the mouse cursor on this box here. So press I and the thing become a, a bit yellowish. Yellowish means there's a keyframe on the frame you actually are on. So if you go to the next frame, to two, this becomes greenish. And greenish means that you have keyframes anywhere in your timeline, but actually you are not on a frame with a keyframe. Okay, so here are keyframes, you see it because it's greenish and let's go to frame one and that becomes yellowish. That means you are on a frame with a keyframe. Yes, and we can use this uh, keyframing for animation. So why not make an example now? Let's delete this default cube and um, let's, let's start with a sphere as example. And uh, yeah, use our great add-on buttons here on the right to make this one in flow. And I would like to make this emit some fluid upwards. So the way to do it is to uh, choose vector here and Use seven for the z-axis as example. Uh, one hind here or one tip here, if you would like to emit fluids uh, to a side, let's uh, say you would like to emit fluid to the left side or, uh, or the right side, you need to know if you need a positive or a negative value. And the trick is to take a look to this here, here to the top of the blender window. You see when moving the sphere to the left, it becomes a more negative number and when moving it to the right it becomes a more positive number and this uh, will help you to find out what you have to type in here. 
Okay, so we have Z7 uh, for upward emitting fluid, and we now need to enable the checkbox here, uh, to animate the enable checkbox here. Let's say we need uh, 10 frames to emit and 10 frames to not emit, and then to repeat it all the time for the whole timeline. With a trick, I'm going to show you. Okay, so let's press I, jump to frame number 10, press I again, and you can see here we have 10 frames where enable checkbox is enabled. Go to frame number 11, disable this one, set a keyframe, go to frame 20, set a new keyframe here, and then we have new keyframes for a disable checkbox here. 10 on, 10 off. And now we, read, we need to repeat this all the time to have something like a sprinkler here. And uh, one way would be to um, select them all and then use copy and paste this uh, keyframes uh, for all of the timeline, but there's a more fine way to do it, and that is using the graphics, the graph, the graph editor. So let's go into this graph editor, and then we will find a curve for our animation. It's here. This is the curve. See on, the switch is on, that means one, and the switch off means here to be on zero. On, off, on, off, 10, 20. Okay, and to make this uh, repeat all the time, make sure you click here on Enabled. Yes, and then you can press the N key to open something like the helper menu. The same way like uh, hitting N on this window here to open this toolbox works when using the or when uh, moving the mouse in this window. And what we need is on the Modifiers tab on the right side something that is called Cycles. And cycles, as you can see, will repeat repeat all the keyframes we set here. On, off, on, off, on, off, endless for all the time. And now we could make uh, a copy of the sphere and move it in onto the side here and then offset all the things uh, to delay uh, our animation a little bit so, not, uh, so that not both spheres will emit fluid at the same time. Uh, but with an offset at time. To do this, you just need to uh, make sure everything is selected by hitting A on your keyboard, and then we will move all the things by three frames to the right side. And the great thing about Blender is the shortcuts. So we just need to press G, X, 3, Enter. And that is all. And you can do it as often as you would like to do. Uh, the last thing that would be needed for a good simulation, of course, is a domain. So uh, a trick here is you can select all your objects here and then click that Create Domain button. And our add-on will calculate automatically how big this domain needs to be. Um, of course, it will uh, not be perfect in all situations, so you might have to make that um, to fit our needs, to match our, to your needs. And uh, then you can hit, you can save your file and hit bake. Okay, so uh, this trick, this setup uh, was used for this simulation here. Okay, and here we go. Yeah. This is always emitting on off, on off, on off. And uh, the slow motion part was interpolated using some uh, post-process thing. Uh, I've used DaVinci Resolve. Uh, that means you might have some artifacts here. But for presentation, I think that is a great simulation. Okay, alright. So, that is uh, all about enabling and disabling. This will also work with other objects like obstacles or fluid object objects. Um, yes, so... You can make some tries, I believe you will have many creative ideas about how to use this new knowledge. Number 3. Small inflow object does not emit fluid and obstacles are not simulated, or fluid is passing through them. When talking about inflow objects, some users told us from their small objects not emitting any fluid or not being visible in the simulation. The reason is that a flip fluid simulation works inside of a simulation grid. You can understand this as a room. This is our domain. And that is split into multiple little rooms. And each of these little rooms is a simulation cell. Only objects that cover by minimum one simulation cell completely can be seen from our simulator. And as long as an object is smaller than this, the simulator cannot see it. And the result is, yes, nothing. To solve this issue, increase the resolution for your simulation or scale your inflow object bigger. 
To help you with finding the right resolutions, there is a debug panel. You find it by scrolling down on the right side. Open it and enable the checkbox for display grid in the grid visualization panel. This makes the simulation grid visible. What you see here is a preview grid. Click on the drop down box and choose final mesh grid. This helps you to analyze your scene and to see if the resolution is high enough to make all objects work in a simulation. And if you enable obstacle debugging for baking, the simulator outputs the mesh in the way it sees it, what can be very helpful too. Number 4. Flickering Fluid Surface Do you know this flickering on fluid surfaces? The cause of flickering is because the mesh vertices are aligned to the domain meshing grid. If the grid voxels are large or the fluid is moving slowly through the grid, you will be able to notice the flickering artifacts as the mesh vertices move through to different grid cells. To uh, solve this or make it look a bit more beautiful, here are some tips for you. The first one is to increase the resolution. The animation you just have seen was simulated with a resolution of 65. And here's the same animation rendered with a resolution of 150. Using a higher resolution does not eliminate the flickering, but it makes it harder to see flickering because it comes from a much smaller simulation grid. So let me give you another example, simulated with a resolution set to 300. Another thing you could try is to increase the number of subdivisions. Here's a resolution 65 with one subdivision compared to the same resolution with two subdivisions. It looks a bit better. And the same comparison with a resolution set to 150 and three subdivisions. There's just a little bit of flickering visible, but no of these simulations can beat the 300 resolution. Or is there anything else we could try? Yes, we can add a smooth modifier and try if this helps to optimize the result. Here's a resolution of 65 with two subdivisions compared to the same scene with a smooth modifier. And number 5. Okay, and in number 5 I would like to talk about the volume loss issue. Some users found out that their simulation loses fluid over time. In bigger simulations you might not notice it, but in some special cases you will. Here's one example, a box with fluid inside and this will fall down some stairs. And on the bottom, there's less fluid inside the box than in the beginning. The volume loss happens because over time fluid particles start to overlap each other. When a lot of particles start overlapping, this is when volume loss starts to become noticeable. It seems to get worse at higher resolutions. At high resolution, particles being closer to each other and can become more likely to overlap. Okay, but what can we do now? One of the best ways to solve this is to decrease the safety value down to 2 or 1. You will find it on the right side in the advanced settings. The field is called safety factor, CFL number, and is set to 5 by default. It defines how many grid cells a fluid particle can travel in a single sub-step. This might increase baking times, but also minimize volume loss issues. Here's a quick comparison. Okay, that were our 5 valuable tips that hopefully help you with your scene. And at this point I would like to point out our 10 tips video that we published some time ago. It is a perfect complement to this video, the link can be found in the description. So thank you for watching and goodbye.